Hello children, do you all know what is so special about today? Today is the first day of your 7th standard. Do you all know who I am? I am your teacher and my name is Atira. Do you all like to sing, dance and listen to stories? If yes, hop into this magical world of English with me. Before we begin, do you all know what a tongue twister is? A tongue twister is a very simple sentence which is very difficult to say out loud. Yes, today we will try to say a tongue twister. Are you all ready? Let's go. So the tongue twister is... She sells seashells on the sea shore. Now I want all of you to repeat it after me. She sells seashells on the sea shore. Let us try to say this a little faster. Do try this with me. She sells seashells on the seashore. She sells seashells on the seashore. She sells seashells on the seashore. Are you getting there? Now, let us try to say this a little bit more fast. She sells seashells on the seashore. She sells seashells on the seashore. She sells seashells on the Oops, I couldn't say it. But I am sure that with practice we will all be able to say this. Did you all have fun saying the tongue twister with me? Make sure you practice this at home. I hope you all had fun saying the tongue twister with me. We all know that words are very important for a language. So now... We will learn some new words. I want all of you to listen to me carefully. Our first word is mournfully. 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 Our second word is mount. 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 A third word is mighty. 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 Our fourth word is glorious. 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 Our fifth and the last word is dazzling. 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 I hope you were able to listen to all these words carefully. Now I will show you all a small video. You have to look at the video very carefully. Did you all like the video? Can you all tell me 
What was the name of the object that you saw in the video? Yes, it was an hour glass. Now let me ask you a simple question. Have you ever tried holding sand in your hand? What happened when you tried to hold it? Yes, it slips. No matter how hard you try to hold sand, it slips. This brings me to my next question. Did you notice anything else in the video? Time, like the sand in the video, does not wait or stop for anyone. No matter how much we try to stop it. This brings us to a very, very important point. Time and tide waits for no one. Time as a concept is very, very difficult to explain. And that is why we use past, present and future to explain it in a simpler way. Past, present and future are very important timelines of our lives. And in today's poem, Past, Present and Future by Emily Broth, we will learn the significance of each of these timelines. Please open page number one of your English Bal Bharti textbook. If you have a textbook, point your finger on the words as I read them. And if you don't have a textbook, please don't worry. Listen to me carefully. While we are reading the poem, I want all of you to pay attention and find the five words that we had learned earlier today. The name of our poem is Past, Present, Future. Tell me, tell me, smiling child, what the past is like to thee an autumn evening soft and mild with a wind that sighs mournfully children can you all see any of the five words that we had learned earlier today Yes, mournfully. The poetess Emily Bronth in the entire poem talks to a child about past, present and future. And the child in his childlike innocence compares all three of these concepts to nature. In the very first stanza, when the poetess asks him, what does he think about past? He says that past for him is like the autumn season. Now, if you look at the picture carefully, you will see exactly why he says so. Yes, the entire atmosphere is calm and serene. There are leaves falling down. The wind is gushing by slowly and mournfully. Mournfully means sadly. Autumn is also used to compare to past because we should remember our past in calmness and wonder. We should not think of our past as something to regret. We should always look at it in wonder. Now, the very fact that autumn is used to compare to past is very interesting. This means that winter is right around the corner. Do you want to know why I said that winter is 
right around the corner. Let us lead ahead to find out. Tell me what is the present R? A green and flowery spray where a young bird sits gathering its par to mount and fly away. Children, can you see any of the rest of the five words that we had learnt earlier today in this stanza? Yes, mount. We all saw that when asked about the past, the child compared it to the autumn season. Now, in the second stanza, when he was asked about the present, he compared it to springtime. He says that present for him is green and flowery. By this, he means that present for him is fresh and joyous. When he says that a young bird is gathering its power to mount and fly, he means that present is filled with potential and opportunities. And all of us must take full advantage of all the opportunities that come to us. Now present has a closer relationship with the future than the past. This is because it's our present that shapes us for our future. It's the present where we plan and work very hard for our future. Just like the bird who is gathering its power to mount and fly. All of this has made me very excited to know about the future. So let us read and find out exactly what future is about. And what is the future happy one? A sea beneath a cloudless sun. A mighty glorious dazzling sea stretching into infinity. Children, can you see any of the other words that we learnt earlier today in this stanza? Yes. Mighty. Glorious. And dazzling. Autumn, past, spring, present and now finally it's time for future. In the entire stanza, Emily Bronte, the poetess, creates a theme of excitement. Vast and bright like the cloudless sun. Here, the child says that our future is limitless and vast and it shines brightly. Mighty as in powerful. Glorious as in extremely beautiful and dazzling which means shining brightly and just like the sea. It stretches to infinity which means that our future has no limit. It is endless. Anything is possible in our future. This is exactly what Emily Brown is trying to say in this stanza. Now that we have understood the entire poem, I want all of you all to read this poem with me.
past, present, future. Tell me, tell me, smiling child, what the past is like to thee? An autumn evening, soft and mild, with a wind that sighs mournfully. Tell me, what is the present hour? A green and flowery spray where a young bird sits gathering its power to mount and fly away. And what is the future, happy one? A sea beneath a cloudless sun, a mighty, glorious, dazzling sea stretching into infinity. Emily Bronze. Did you all like the poem? In this poem, we learned that our past is something we should remember calmly and in wonder. Something that we should not regret at all. Our present is something that we should focus on because it is our present that shapes our future. We should take advantage of all the opportunities that come before us. And it's our present that we should plan and work extremely hard. Now that we finally come to our future, we learned that the future is not something that we should be nervous or anxious about. But it is something that we should look forward to. Something we should approach with an open mind. Today, we learned a wonderful poem. Now, let's all do an activity. On your screen, you will see some sentences. You have to look at these sentences carefully and identify which of these sentences is a simile and which of them is a metaphor. Sounds a little confusing, right? Let me explain these concepts to you. Our first concept is simile. Simile is a comparison between a person or thing. But here, the comparison is between a quality that they have in common. For example, Rahul is as tall as a tree. Here, the quality that Rahul and tree have in common is tall. Rahul is as tall as a tree. Now let's move to our second concept, metaphor. Metaphor is used to compare a person or thing to another person or thing. But the catch here is that metaphor is used to directly compare. But we have to guess the quality. For example, Rahul is a gem of a person. Here, I have directly compared Rahul to a gem. But do you think I am talking about the fact that Rahul is actually a gem? No, right? Here, I am comparing the quality of a gem to Rahul, which is valuable. So when I say Rahul is a gem of a person, what I really mean is Rahul is valuable. Now, simile and metaphor both compare, right? But how do we identify which is which? The one thing that is extremely different is simile uses words like as and like. 
but metaphor does not. When I said Rahul is as tall as a tree, but in metaphor, I did not say Rahul is as gem as. What I said was Rahul is a gem of a person. Here I directly compared and all of us had to guess what the quality was. I hope you were able to understand the difference between a simile and a metaphor. Now, on your screen, you will see some sentences and you have to identify which of these sentences is a simile and which is a metaphor. For example, the first sentence is the present is green and flowery like the spring. Yes, this is the sentence that we read in our poem. Here, the present is directly compared to spring. So, we all know that this sentence is a metaphor. Similarly, I want all of you to read the rest of the sentences and try to identify which of them is a simile and which is a metaphor. Now let us look at the answer. Our second sentence is Smita is as brave as a lion. Hmm. We see as brave as a lion here. So it's very clear that this is a simile. Now let us move to our next sentence. The baby's smile is as bright as the sun. Again, here the baby's smile is compared to the quality of the sun which is bright. And here the words as bright as is used. So this again is a simile. I hope you all like learning with me. Now it's time for all of you to sit back and relax while I tell you all a wonderful story. In today's poem, we learned that it's our present that helps us shape our future. All the hard work and planning and the opportunities that we get in the present is what leads us to our future. There is one more important thing that we learned today. We should always be hopeful of our future because our future is unimaginable and vast. Anything can happen in our future. With all of this, we also learned that we should not look back at our past with regret. We should always look at our past with calm and wonder. In today's story, we will see how little Jubilee tried to build hope for the future in the eyes of all of her village. The name of the story today is There Must Be a Rainbow. It is written by Nerissa Govinder. In the kingdom of Zulu, there was a magnificent place called the Valley. A little girl Jubilee lived in this village. Jubilee was a very happy child. She was curious and fascinated about life. She always had a lot of questions.
Jubilee's father was a farmer and her mother was a teacher. Both her mother and father always taught Jubilee to dream big. Her biggest dream was to help others. Everyone in the valley was Jubilee's friend, especially the elders. They taught her about all the wise people that lived in the village. Jubilee also wanted to be wise. One awful day, clouds began gathering over the valley. Everything became dark and grey. An ugly storm swept across the valley. Great gusts of wind blew the top of the huts. All the animals lost their homes and everyone around the village also lost their homes. It was a very very sad day for the valley. All the crops were ruined, all the animals had lost their homes, all the villagers lost their huts. Everything in the village was a mess. All the villagers were screaming and crying in pain. But that's exactly when Jubilee remembered something her father had once told her. What do you think her father had told her? Jubilee walked up to the villagers and told them that the storm only hurt us because of the way we looked at it. After every storm, there must be a sun. Today is a new day and we will make sure that our future does not hamper because of the past. We will not look at the past with regret. Instead, we will plan for our future today. When everyone looked up at the sky, there indeed was a bright shining sun. Everyone began nodding in approval. And that's when Jubilee told them that after every single storm, there must be a rainbow. And just then, a beautiful rainbow spread across the sky. I hope you all like this story. Today, we learned a lot of wonderful things. Now, let me try to sum our session up using a quote from Kung Fu Panda. Yesterday is history. Tomorrow is a mystery. And today is a gift. That's why it is called present. Now, I want all of you to share this quote with your family and friends. I will see you all in the next session. Until then, stay home, stay safe and bye-bye.